So it's been a bit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've been posting. What's been happening with me? How am I doing? What's the weather like on the 11th floor? The answer to most of these questions are privy to only a select group of people, mainly my jiggly pop plushie. But one thing I can say is, transition is hard. To expand motivation while in a season of transition is hard. At least it was for me. And that's what we'll be talking about today. How to maintain motivation to do the things you want to do when everything is changing. When your focus is divided and your brain is scattered. How do you prevent yourself from dropping the things that were once important to you? So what's been going on with me and how have I been juggling PhD life, personal life, learning Chinese and making videos. Clearly one of those things have fallen off the deep end, but I'm trying to bring it back. Finding an apartment in New York during one of the most competitive rental seasons was definitely a challenge. But once that was over, the bigger challenge of planning the move and moving cross states was in full force. And then came getting used to the hustle and bustle of New York, but to be honest, I'm still not used to it and I just don't go downtown because there's too many people and it makes me anxious. Clearly, I'm not one of those girls that are popping up all over YouTube saying, I've been wanting to live here my whole life. I'm so excited to become a true New Yorker, meet cool people, go to New York Fashion Week, and live the high life. And not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just not me. I'm a homebody. I stay at home. But once the move was over, PhD actually came swinging with full force. And to be honest, classes weren't that bad and rotations weren't the worst. It took a good chunk of my time, but it was fun. I met so many amazing people and I enjoyed every second of it. It was definitely an adjustment commuting to various buildings sprinkled throughout Manhattan, but that's just the fun of it. But subway time is a great way to just sit with your thoughts or listen to music or read. And what I didn't anticipate was how tired I would be both physically and mentally. PhD, industry job. Yes, I'm still working part-time so I can fund my NYC lifestyle. But learning in classes, learning in rotation, socializing with professors, trying to make new friends, which I haven't had to do since college. My brain hurt. I didn't anticipate how much new things, new experiences, new ideas, new people would make my brain just feel like mush at the end of the day. In retrospect, that's pretty obvious, but clearly I'm a dummy. So I come home and I plop into my bed, say I'm gonna get up and do some Chinese studying, make some videos, and my body and brain is like, nope, you're gonna lay here forever and ever and ever. Transition is hard. You know that girl that woke up at 5 a.m. to study four hours of Chinese before work? Yeah, not me anymore. I didn't look at a single bit of Chinese for almost four months. And since my channel is a Chinese learning channel, no Chinese equals no video content. I just had no motivation to do my hobbies and the things that I was passionate about because my brain was fried every single day. YouTube productivity gurus obsessed with notion planners be coming at me with their top 10 tips and tricks to finally be that productive it girl and make all my dreams come true. After some time, I got back into it. Once things weren't as new anymore, once my head wasn't hurting anymore, I realized those goals and desires never left, I just needed some time off. So again, transition is hard, so be kind to yourself. It's okay if life is just too busy or too hectic to take a break from other things that aren't as integral to your health and happiness. Breaks are actually really good for you, for your brain and body, even if hustle culture would disagree. And readjustment of which things take priority especially in a season of transition, is incredibly important for well-adjusted adults. So don't feel bad when you have to drop something for the time being. Don't be discouraged if you come back to it later and there's been a significant decrease in ability. That's just the learning process. That's just the living process. But once you want to get back into it, whether that's learning your target language or playing an instrument, getting better at that one skill or whatever else you desire. Know that it will be so much easier to get back to where you were and surpass your previous level. Finding motivation is hard when life is moving so fast. So once it settles down, take a look at your desires, your motivations, time, and free adjust. Figure out what works for you and your new normal. Remind yourself that it's okay. So what's the new normal for me? What are my learning goals and how am I going to go about them? Well, I've stopped using the HSK books. Which may not be a surprise to those of you that are intermediate or advanced learners. This is something I've been saying from the beginning, but I personally believe that textbooks are a tool 
to get you to native content more efficiently, but it'll never get you 100% fluent. So they're basically a graded reader with more explanations to help you get your bearings in a language. And if you use them with that purpose in mind, they're an amazing resource. But because no resource is perfect, there are limitations. Since they're designed to be used in a traditional classroom setting, especially if you're learning on your own, you can learn really unnatural speech. And technically it's correct, but since you have limited vocabulary, you form sentences with what you know, not what native speakers would probably use in real life. Let's give a little example in English. In a textbook, you'll probably find this sentence. I'm going to take the dog out for a walk, okay? That is a grammatically accurate sentence that native speakers will comprehend. But doesn't it seem pretty robotic? Real people and not textbook characters in our manufactured dialogues would probably say, Hey, I'm gonna take the dog out, okay? So what did our textbook fail to teach us in this simple sentence? Interjections. A and mm and uh, among others, are used all the time to quickly convey the tone. Implied context. When you say, take the dog out, it's assumed that you're taking it out for a walk. You don't need to waste time specifying that it's for a walk, when that phrase inherently includes that implication. Slurring, real people are lazy, talk fast and don't enunciate. Most of us aren't theater performers who project and enunciate. Even if your textbook includes audio, usually they're slowed down or pronounced clearly or in the standard dialect. And even in these videos, I slow myself down, focus on enunciation so I can be more clearly understood. And when you're a beginner to intermediate though, those things are probably too complicated. So for that purpose, textbooks are amazing. But when you try to get over that intermediate plateau, which hot take, I think is low key fake, those training wheels become an impediment. So out with the textbooks and in with the graded readers. Wait, haven't you been using graded readers for a while? How is that any different? Ah, oh, sorry, I see where your confusion lies. I'm exclusively using graded readers that I've made myself from content that I want to watch. I realized my motivation to learn died because I wasn't consuming content that I enjoyed anymore. So how do I adjust? make material from content that I enjoy. Creative readers are amazing at helping make content more comprehensible, but I got to that phase in my learning that content mattered to my motivation. The fact that I was reading and learning, story be damned, wasn't enough to keep me going. But I still wanted the benefits of extensive and intensive reading that graded readers with vocabulary definitions at the bottom provide, especially the spaced repetition component when you read a book multiple times. So what was my solution? Make them myself from content that I care about. And that's the only thing I'm doing right now. I stopped using Anki, shocking I know, because now I just read. I get my intensive exercise from making the book, I get my extensive exercise from reading the book, and since it's from video content, I get an audio recording for the price of F-R-E-E. -E. So until I get tired of that method, I'll keep using it and see how far it takes me. But it's going really well so far. It's really hard and my brain feels like it's about to die many times, but getting through pages and hours of work is actually really satisfying. And being able to understand native audio and various dialects is also really, really motivating. So that's my Chinese learning hack and tune in next week for a deeper dive into my personalized graded reader product. I'll show you how I choose content, make the books, and incorporate it into my learning. Sound good? Okay, bye.